Hello, Dad. What are you doing? Uh, I'm trying to fix this uh, Super Beta video recorder. I've uh, glued a component. I don't know if it'll hold, but uh, it's going to take a while for the glue to set. So uh, I'll just have to see how that goes. How about you play with this box of goodies while you have it? Oh, while well, I'm waiting for the glue to set. I suppose I could. Uh, do you know what's in this? No. Oh, all right then. Let's uh, have a rummage. Thank you, Alex. Some interesting cables and equipment. Let's empty it all out onto the desk. Right, let's start with uh, something quite random. Seems to be a little tripod here. Nothing terribly uh, fancy, but uh, it's a nice lightweight tripod. Got a quick release top. And quite importantly, whoops, <laughs> it's got the top because, of course, if that's missing, it's a pain. And they're always different. It's not like these things have been standardized. I don't know why they can't standardize those. That looks different to the one that you're sat on, uh, which is from Manfrotto. Uh, this is uh, something a little cheaper, I suspect. And it looks like something's missing here. Would that be a handle? I'm guessing that would be the handle that winds it up and down. But, ah, yeah, look, there's a rack there, so there should be a handle in there. But since you can lock it off with this, it doesn't matter what that's for. So, yes, it doesn't matter that the, uh, the handle's missing. It's a lightweight, basic tripod. I'll make use of that. What else do we have? Uh, there's some professional stuff here. I'll come to that one later. Next item we're looking at here is ADVC55 Canopus Advanced DV Converter. Now I've shown these on my channel before. I'll take S video or composite in and stereo audio and output to Firewire, uh, giving the same sort of Firewire stream you get from a mini DV camcorder. Uh, this switch is the most important here. These configure it. Some of them are test switches I think for the factory use but the first one is that's NTSC and that's PAL so this will be used for PAL most of the time uh, there's an external power input if you don't have enough power from your firewire device um, and I have used that on occasion on one or two of these before what cables have you got with it some firewire cables So that would be if you wanted to connect to, say, a laptop, which only has a small firewire input. And that's the large to large, which we will use on this computer in a minute and give it a whirl and do some capturing with it. Got some cables. So that's an S video. Oh, look, we do have the power. Ah. So that would be a 5 volt power supply. 3 amp, complete overkill for what it's doing and that then will fit this and I believe it's quite safe to have both that and the firewire cable connected as such um, I will probably use it without that initially that's it I think oh no we have instructions too I should say that connecting to a, a laptop is not generally a good idea anyway because capturing to the same disk as the operating system can cause dropped frames. Now it does say that it detects macrovision signals and presumably then will uh, yeah it'll go red and stop capturing but if you're capturing via a time-based corrector it won't care about that. In fact we're going to do our test with one of my time-based correctors. So we'll use one of these. I've featured these many times before. Okay so I've connected one end to the PC's firewire nine uh, uh, six pin firewire port extreme care with that when this socket's wear it is possible to plug them in back to front and you will fry the electronics in the uh, remote device and one of these i did many years ago managed to fry in just that way it's red because it's got no valid input it prioritizes these so that if you don't have anything plugged into there s video is hooked up Right, we're now green on there, and we can capture on this computer. We're going to use the WinDV app, which is a 
free and capable but somewhat elderly and not recently updated uh, DV capture uh, tool. Really like this and do wish it had been kept up to date. Alright, so I have the uh, Canopus ADVC55 here connected to this time based corrector which I'm going to power up with a colour bar test signal. Still got a red light on there. I started up WinDV and I'm just going to try capturing and that's gone green and we'll see up there that we have the colour bars being displayed and it's rolling here the time and the queue is zero because there's a reasonably fast computer and drop frames is zero. So that is capturing now. Okay, I'm not capturing any audio. I've got video only of the colour bars. I'll just cycle through the colour patterns here. And you can see those. And that file will, if I cancel there, now exist. And I can play that uh, file here, including a bit at the end where I step through the colours. So that has captured successfully, proving that this is a good working Canopus device. Now, we can go into this whole argument again about whether DV is a good um, data format for video. And I don't want to have too much of an argument about this. Uh, certainly, uh, I believe people from NTS countries, NTSC countries, don't like DV as much because the colour resolution on NTSC is less than it is in PAL countries. Um, there are more efficient capture codecs, but a great deal of what I produce anyway comes from Mini DV and Digital 8, and I'm, I'm capturing that directly from those players. So I'm already producing files of the DV uh, stream, and this is just another way, this for other formats, for the analog formats, providing files of the same type. Uh, furthermore, it's a good deal better than the heavily compressed files you'll get from these little, you know, cheap and cheerful USB capture devices. These files, you know, they're 13 gigabytes per hour, so they're low compression, relative, relatively high quality file format. Clearly, for professional use, you know, digital beta cam and stuff like that. I don't use DV all the time. Very often I'll use 10-bit YUV files of 100 gigabytes per hour, but not all customers need them. Right, so we won't have that argument, will we? We'll su suffice to say that it produces a reasonably good ratio of file size to quality. Oh, and just one more thing I'll say about the DV far, far wire data stream is a good thing about it is it's supported by virtually all software. Uh, the only exception being, as far as I'm aware, um, some versions of Adobe Elements do not support DV AVI files, but pretty much everything else does. And even then, I've converted DV AVI to DV MOV, and then they've worked. Uh, and that's a lossless conversion. Okay, let's look at uh, what else is in this collection of goodies. Um, Starting with these, are these the same? Let's have a look at them. So it's AJA Dual Rate HD SD Audio Video AD Converter and from the same manufacturer, four channel balanced audio embedder disembedder. Ooh, uh, that will take HD and SD input, and it's got two outputs and audio I/O, but we'll need the right connector for that. Is that the one? It might be. I think it must be. So that's got YUV and two audio channels. I'm quite sure what it says four there. It's a mystery. Now, why would this say audio I.O. and have YUV connectors? Do you think this is the right cable? 
not sure. It may be a satisfactory cable. What this could be used for... Ah, power cable. We need the power for this. Is that what these are for? That's the right connector. And we have the IEC power cables here. So I believe what we can use this for... I have a BVW65P analog beta cam deck, which I've demonstrated on the channel before. And it has a digital output, but no embedded audio. So I believe what I could do is put that signal into here, embed the audio, and take a full SDI signal here for capture onto my um, SDI uh, capture device. Then, no, that can't be right, because this is not a video in co uh, converter, is it? So, that can't be right. Do you think these two units may have each other's cables at the moment? Well, that's got audio connectors, but they're not balanced. They're unbalanced connectors. But there are four channels. So maybe there's a version of this cable with balanced connectors. So I think I've got the wrong breakout cable for what I need. I think this would need to go, a version of this would need to go on here. Let's just see if they are interchangeable. Okay, that looks more like it insofar as we now have four audio connectors. So, if there were four unbalanced outputs on the BVW65P, that would allow me to embed the audio in here. But there aren't. I guess I could use uh, balanced to unbalanced connectors going to here, but that's less than ideal. So what I really need is the proper audio cable for this. And then I could use that with the BVW65P, which, as it happened, uh, I did use the other day because it played a particularly difficult tape that no other machine would play. It was recorded with, I think, um, uh, an error in drum speed. And it was able to lock onto it where all my other machines were doing a line slip thing. But fortunately, that particular video had no audio on it anyway. So I didn't need to embed the audio and I just connect, captured it through the SDI port and off we went. So um, this would allow me to make more use of the BVW65P either by using bodged up um, balanced to unbalanced cables or by getting the correct uh, connector for that. So this one is AV input. Right, that makes a lot of sense. Use the same power. Now this could be particularly useful because uh, I could use this to directly uh, capture SDI from my M2 format machines, which have got YUV outputs and balanced audio. So that would be a really useful thing to connect to uh, an M2 deck. Just simply connect that on the back of the M2 and then use a cable from here to my SDI capture. Right, so that's... Uh, Potentially very useful with M2, but it could be used with other uh, professional formats too. Right, and what do we have here? And are these related? Is this cabling something to do with this? I believe it is. I suspect some of these cables are new. I don't think that's ever been undone. So what we have here are four small connectors. I'm sorry, I've forgotten the name of them, but I'm sure somebody will tell me. So they are for STI in and out. That will be those. And here's a multi-way connector, which may also never have been used. <laughs> Good heavens. Right, so that connects to there. And this gives us RS422 serial connection, AS audio, that one's AS audio in, 
You can take RGB in, AS audio out, YUV out, up to six channels of AES audio out, and AES seven and eight in. So I'd have to go through all of them, but I think we're talking about a complete set of audio and video in and out, both analog and AES digital audio. And these are in and out as well. So we've got two in and two out. Let's uh, look up what the uh, model number is. It's a Kona 4R0, I think that is. Looking at it, we also have there a HDMI connector, I believe. So that is a stunning up to 4K capture card. Absolutely stunning. Let's have a look at the... Um, build date on this one. It says 1534 there, so uh, I believe that is a 2015 card. So it's a few years old now, but still very capable. Okay, I believe they've had uh, two revisions since then. There's been an S01 and an S02, which are newer versions that probably do more resolutions. You know, looking at this, I suspect this has not been used or hardly been used because normally the fan would have collected a bit of dust but none at all that I can see. I was thinking I'll install this on a PC I've got near most of my professional equipment. Um, so plug these in and I'm, I'm going to do initially I'm going to have a go at capturing SDI with it. Now, one of the computers I've already got near all that equipment already has an SDI capture card. Nothing as fancy as this. It's just um, SDI monitor, is it called? Anyway, whatever it is, it's only for SDI capture. Nothing like this. But one of the things that I was thinking was these cables are not really ideal because when you connect up this, you can then get a long length of cable and then four... BNC connectors for your SDI inputs and outputs. But how are you going to connect these to several machines? They're too close together. They only, they only get a few millimetres there. So really, it would have been better if these had been female connectors and maybe the cable had been shorter and then you could connect your existing uh, BNC SDI cables that you've already got in your uh, infrastructure uh, to this, treating it as though this has just got a socket. So I'm not sure this cable, this adapter cable, is really that well thought through, because if you've already got SDI cables, you're going to have to use a BNC to BNC back to back adapter on this, which is what I'm going to have to do if I have one to hand and if it's good enough quality for the uh, the signals. But the other difficulty I've got, which is more severe. The computer I'm going to be installing this in is old uh, and it's not the fastest and it may not be fast enough to keep up with the data rate from this. So we'll give it a whirl but I may end up really having to use it with a better computer later. Right, let's plug it in and see what it does. I've just made a terrible mistake. I'd asked the computer to switch off, but it hadn't fully. And I've just inserted the card. I mean, as mistakes go, they don't come up much bigger than that. You do not. That could have blown up any number of things. But I had, oh. It could have blown up the computer, it could have blown up the card, it could have blown up both. The computer hadn't shut down properly. Let's see if it boots. No, we'll switch it on.
That's post power self test. So the the computer survived. Well, while that's hopefully booting, let's connect these up. So if you're stuck at the Windows uh, prompt a bit, yeah, that's a bit worrying. I won't connect this up until we uh, manage to get Windows to boot, I think. It's not happy, is it? Switch it off. Take the card out. This time it really is very off. That looks better. Right, so let's power the computer down again and try the card again. That's the position it was in when I accidentally inserted the card last time. The machine is off, but the power supply fan is spinning. Now maybe it wasn't powered up. Maybe I was okay. Maybe it was just that the power supply is just on the cooling cycle there. Maybe I did nothing wrong. No, nope. we cannot boot the computer with that card inserted. Maybe it's down to this particular computer, but it's not going to happen. Right, OK, we'll take it out again and um, we'll have to try it on another computer another time. Well, we have a slot available in this old machine. Uh, actually, this might be slightly faster than the original target machine as well. So uh, let's uh, see if it'll boot with this card installed in here. OK, I've installed the card in this machine here and we'll see the results on that upper screen there if it works looking happier it's just done a reboot I wasn't expecting do you think maybe it consumes more power than the uh, power supplies are capable of aha uh -huh. maybe it was just a Windows update thing it says multimedia video controller Okay, I think we need to install some drivers. Okay, let's try this uh, AJA board that's now installed in this machine. So there is uh, a system test and device test. So we want a device test. Yes, we want to check that it works. Uh, we've failed. It says device DMA test failed. Does that mean maybe the computer's just not fast enough? Well, let's uh, actually try doing a capture with it. Uh, which I think you do under control room. Right, so, quick look over here. We have our HD Cam SR machine set up with a tape in it. So in a moment, I'll press play on that and we'll see if we can capture that via the SDI cable that I've now hooked up. I didn't have a back-to-back -back connector so I've used a, a switch. So, you know, it's not ideal, but uh, it's what we have right now. Okay, so I'm playing the HD Cam SR tape. Well, we get a preview. That's a good sign. So, uh, how do I start capture? This button here. Uh, it says, where do I want to save the file? I believe we are actually capturing. Uh, I don't believe there is any audio on this tape, so it's not surprising we don't see anything on that. Right, so I've demonstrated the Canopus capture device, the AJA SDI capture device. What we haven't tried, and I won't be trying just yet, is the audio embedder. Well, we have a problem that the cables are not quite the right type they do include the schematics for the, the pinout for the connector so in theory I could make up my own uh, balanced cable uh, system for that and the other one is the uh, A to D converter which will go from uh, in this case we'll be using YUV in standard definition though this is high definition as well and audio to SDI and that I probably will be using with the M2 machines. 
So it's been a great little collection of things to play with. Oh, by the way, some of the shots I did earlier were made on that uh, tripod we got in as well. So a big thank you to all the people who donated those bits and pieces to me. Uh, and I'll do plenty more content in the future on audio and video technology. Bye for now.